Hi everyone. Welcome back to Dave's Math Channel. I'm your host, David Tear, and I believe this will be my last video in my series on first year calculus. Uh, in this video, I'm going to talk about Euler's formula, which is a very important formula. As a matter of fact, it's considered by many mathematicians one of the most important and most remarkable formulas in mathematics. And, uh, um, it says e to the i theta equals cosine theta plus i sine theta, where, um, uh, and the, the, this picture shows a visual representation. Anyway, let's begin. So here's a, here's a magnified picture of that slide. So this is Euler's formula, like I said, e to the i theta equals cosine theta plus i sine theta. Um, pretty remarkable formula if you think about it. I mean, you know, how, how else would we interpret, uh, um, exponential function of a, with an imaginary argument. Um, I used to wonder this myself until I saw this formula. And when I saw this formula the first time, I was really blown away by it. Um, and anyway, uh, here's a visual uh, representation of this formula. So you can think of this number cosine theta plus i sine theta is just a, um, uh, a point on the unit circle on the complex plane. So this picture shows the unit circle on the complex plane. Um, the, the real component of a point on the unit circle is cosine theta. That's just the x component. And the imaginary component, or the y component, you'll like, is sine theta. So we know, uh, I mean, this, this uh, requires a little bit of knowledge of complex analysis. I actually have another video on uh, Euler's formula. You might want to watch that one. I don't want to go into complex analysis in too much detail here. Just suffice it to say that um, we can represent this complex number e to the i theta is just the, you can think of it as a vector in the xy plane. It's a vector with x component equal to cosine theta and y component equal to sine theta. So naturally, we can also write this thing as cosine theta plus i sine theta. And you can think of it as a vector of length 1 um, with an argument or angle, if you like, the angle it makes with respect to the x-axis is theta. So that's a geometric representation of Euler's formula. Pretty nice. Anyway, I want to derive this formula. And with all the tools we have right now, we can derive it fairly easily, it turns out. In the last video, I talked about um, uh, Taylor series, and in particular, I derived these three Taylor series. These are probably three of the most important Taylor series there are, so let's just look at them again. We derived uh, e to the x. We wrote that as a sum. Uh, these are all infinite sums. This is a sum um, and, and going from 0 to infinity of x to the n over n factorial. We derived that last time just using Taylor's theorem. Pretty easy to derive. And then uh, we derived two more uh, um, Taylor series, namely the Taylor series for cosine x, which is the sum n goes from 0 to infinity of minus 1 to the n times x to the 2n over 2n quantity factorial. And sine x is the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of minus 1 to the n times x to the 2n plus 1 over 2n plus 1 quantity factorial. So we derived all three of those formulas, and those weren't all that hard to do. And if you haven't seen uh, my last video, I recommend you watch it, the one on Taylor's series, so that you know how to derive these formulas. But anyway, um, once we have these formulas, it's pretty easy to derive Euler's formula. Let's see how that works. Well, we just substitute i theta for x, and, uh, um, and if we do that, we get the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity uh, times i theta to the nth power, the quantity i theta to the nth power. We're just substituting i theta for x. We get x to the n before. Now we have i theta to the n and the whole thing over n factorial. And uh, we can rewrite i theta to the nth power. This is just a um, rule I'm sure you guys all know for exponentiating a product. Um, it's just uh, you have i to the n times theta to the n all over n factorial. But we can break this up into two parts. We can write um, n as uh, either 2m, where uh, uh, the even, when n is even, we can write n as 2m. So the even terms look like i to the 2m times theta to the 2m all over 2m quantity factorial. And 
the odd terms, uh, the terms with odd uh, exponents, uh, or odd n, um, or i to the 2m plus 1 times theta to the 2m plus 1 all over 2m plus 1 quantity factorial. Well, we're almost done. I mean, you know that i squared is minus 1, right? That's one of the most basic things you learn when you learn complex analysis. As a matter of fact, you can think of that as a definition of i. So we can write i to the 2m, that's just i squared to the mth power, but i squared is minus 1. So that whole thing is just minus 1 to the m. So we have on the left, we have this sum as m goes from 0 to infinity, minus 1 to the m, theta to the 2m, all over 2m factorial. That's our first sum. And our second sum, we can write i to the 2m plus 1, that's just i, I times i to the 2m. We already showed that i to the 2m was minus 1 to the m, so we have i times i to the, i times minus 1 to the m. But we can pull the i out of the sum because it's uh, just from the distributive property we can do that. So we have i times the sum as m goes from 0 to infinity of minus 1 to the m times theta to the 2m plus 1 over 2m plus 1 quantity factorial. Well now, if you look at formula 2 and 3, uh, um, the Taylor series for cosine x and sine x, you see that this first sum is nothing but the Taylor series for cosine theta. And the second term, the second infinite sum, is just the um, Taylor series of sine theta. And we pulled an i out, so uh, you see that the result is just cosine theta plus i sine theta. That's how you derive Euler's formula. Pretty easy, pretty easy, just using Taylor series, which we derived last time. So I think that's part of the... Um, beauty of uh, calculus. I mean, just with what you've learned from first-year calculus, you know how to derive this formula now, which many mathematicians consider one of the most important or maybe the most important um, equation in mathematics. Pretty amazing that we can do that. And, uh, and I'm just going to finish by talking about another related formula, namely Euler's identity which says e to the i pi plus 1 equals 0. This turns out to be just a special case of Euler's formula. Let's see what happens when we plug in pi for theta. So we know that e to the i theta is cosine theta plus i sine theta. That's this Euler's formula. Let's see what we get when we, when we substitute pi for theta. Well, we get e to the i pi equals cosine pi plus i sine pi. Remember the arguments of cosine and sine are radians here. And pi radians is like 180 degrees. So the cosine of pi or the cosine of 180 degrees is just minus 1. Uh, and the sine of pi or the sine of 180 degrees is 0. So we're going to get minus 1 plus i times 0, which is just minus 1. So now we have e to the i pi equals minus 1. Uh, now what happens when we add 1 to both sides? We get e to the i plus 1 on the left, and we get minus 1 plus 1 or 0 on the right. So we get Euler's identity that way, e to the i pi plus 1 equals 0. So what's so remarkable about Euler's identity? Well, I think there's a couple things that are really remarkable about it. First of all, you notice that it, it includes five constants. There's exactly five numerical constants in these equations, namely e, i, pi, 1, and 0. Well, those are considered by most mathematicians to be the five probably the five most important con uh, uh, cons constants in all of mathematics. And they all appear in one equation, each one exactly once. And if that's not enough, um, then uh, there's also three binary uh, arithmetic operations in this uh, equation, namely addition, because we have plus in the middle, and also multiplication, we're multiplying i times pi, and also exponentiation, we're exponenting, you know, we're taking e to the power i times pi. So this, this equation, not only does it include probably the five most important mathematical constants, but it also includes uh, probably the three most important arithmetic operations, namely addition, multiplication, and exponentiation. So I kind of think of this formula it's sort of like a unified field theory of math, if you like. You know, I mean, you know, the holy grail of physics is what uh, is known as the unified field theory. That would be a theory of everything. That would be like a simple equation or maybe a simple set of equations 
that could explain in principle everything that's known about physics. I think you know a lot of physicists believe uh, uh, that exists, and and uh, um, you know a lot of physicists are looking for the unified field theory. Uh, nobody's found it yet. Um, um, there seem to be some promising um, um, you know, research in it. I mean, a lot of a lot of string theorists think string theory is supposed to be the theory of everything, except right now it's still a theory of nothing because we don't know how to calculate anything with it that makes any um, physical, uh, any, uh, you know, any experimentally verifiable results. But I don't want to get into that. This isn't a physics lecture. But if you think of math in kind of the same way, I kind of think of Euler's uh, identity, maybe Euler's formula, sort of like a unified field theory of math. It's not quite because it doesn't explain everything there is to know about math. But it is a simple equation. Both uh, equation four and equation five are very simple equations. You can write them in one line, both in one line, just with a few symbols. And they don't explain everything about math. So I guess in that way, they're not really unified field theory. But they, uh, like I said, they have these remarkable properties and they're very simply uh, written equations that involve a lot, a lot of math went into finding these equations. Don't forget that we had to learn pretty much everything we've learned about first year calculus, plus everything you learned before about arithmetic and, uh, and uh, you know, uh, theory of functions, cosines, sines, and exponents and all that, exponential functions. So a lot went into these equations. And yet you got these really simple equations out of it. Pretty amazing to me. Anyway, um, that concludes my... Uh, my video for today and uh, also my series on first year calculus. Thank you for watching. Long live math and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.